My first goal, probably one of my biggest goals, take note of what workouts you actually like and actually go to. And there's just never a good time, so we're just gonna start now. The B word, Botox. Dermaplaning, fake confidence till you make it. But also I want to push myself in ways, but I think there's other ways to push yourself. I wrote, find people who inspire you to keep you going. It is time to glow up. What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Danielle. Hello, welcome, subscribe down below if you are new and you wanna stick around. I know it's almost the holiday season and it's kind of a time where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna be more chill and I'm gonna enjoy the holidays, whatever. January 1st, I'll get back on my New Year's goals. I'll get to all those things I wanted to do. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Brooke and I did an episode on Gals Mingo podcast all about like the fall winter uglies and like I'm just feeling them right now. And I just don't wanna feel that way. And I've been wanting to do this for a while and there's just never a good time so we're just gonna start now. <laughs> so this is gonna be a video all about how I'm going to be glowing up or attempt to glow up and I would love if you guys join me. I literally on the plane the other day coming back from Florida make made a huge list, like ginormous list of how I am glowing up. So I have health, beauty, and lifestyle. Some things are more surface level, some things are more goal oriented, and I just thought it would be fun to kind of start my journey with a YouTube video, share it with you guys, you can join along, and we're just gonna get into it. Keep in mind, these are things that I wanna do for myself. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a licensed professional, we all know this, um, but these are things that I'm gonna start implementing into my life starting now, not waiting till January 1st. I wanna start now, I wanna feel good during the holidays. Also a little plug to follow me on Instagram, at Danielle Carolyn, follow me on TikTok, at Danielle underscore Carolyn, listen to my podcast, Gals on the Go. We do episodes kind of like this sometimes. And also to go follow me on LTK, um, it's just my name, I always have, always have it linked down below. That's where you can shop all of my outfits, all the makeup I use, all the skincare. I literally link my life on there. So, and I always have everything linked down below as well that I talk about today. I won't really be talking about products per se, but definitely go follow me on there. So let's start our hot girl fall winter journey. So first up, we're gonna do health. My first goal, probably one of my biggest goals, is I'm gonna, or not goals, we're actually gonna reframe this in my brain. What I'm gonna start doing, how about that? <laughs> I'm gonna eat more protein and fiber. Um, I find that it's easier for me to focus on like one or two food groups that I want to get more intake on. So for me, I know and I know I need to eat more protein. I just love carbs so much. I'm not gonna start, stop eating carbs, but I know I need to up my protein intake. Protein is great for recovery after workout. It also helps build muscle. There's just so many reasons to be eating more protein. Also, from what I understand, helps with your hormones. It's also really good to have protein in the morning with breakfast, with your coffee. Like it's not really good to, they say to have coffee on an empty stomach. It's good to have protein when you wake up in the morning. So I'm just trying to implement more protein intake in general and then also fiber. Some examples of things, like you can just go on, what I did is I literally Googled like foods high in protein, foods high in fiber. Um, and then you kind of pick from there like what's best for you. Like the thing is, you're not gonna do it if it's something you don't like. So for me, I wrote down, like I, I've been loving ground turkey, ground chicken, beans are a good fiber, strawberries fiber, broccoli, carrots, oatmeal, quinoa fiber, um, proteins, if, you know, lots of meats uh, or eggs, you know, stuff like that. My go-to lunch meal recently, I have to give credit to my trainer, Jane, cause I was, I just like hate cooking chicken. I don't really like cooking meat. I feel like a lot of people feel this way. I don't have an air fryer. I don't, I have like a little grill that I really like, but I have to keep pulling it in and out. I just, I don't know. I don't, I feel like the chicken, when I just cook it on the uh, stove, like on, on my pan, it's not tasty. But I have found, and she reminded me, there's ground beef, there is ground turkey, there's ground chicken. And I really like ground meat, I'm realizing. It's really easy to cook. I just put it on a pan and I add like garlic and onion powder, a little salt and pepper, and it's delicious. And you can eat that with rice and veggies. My go-to has been, like literally just for lunch just now, I had ground turkey with like zucchini and onions, and it was so good. Um, I wasn't like super hungry, so I didn't add rice, but like sometimes, maybe like for dinner, I would add like a little thing of rice. Just something easy like that. And also I like ground meat because you can meal prep it. Like you can make it in the beginning of the week and then you just have it to add to all different meals. You could do like tacos one day. You could do a bowl. You could add it to a salad. I just think that's my new, my new game plan. The point of this all is just realizing like what works for you, what you like, what you don't like. Cause if you don't like it, you're not gonna do it. I'm learning that myself. Second, this is something I haven't done yet. I'm gonna sit down this week and kind of figure it out. Take note of what workouts you actually like and actually go to. 
like not even what you actually like what what do you go to what do you find yourself scheduling what do you find yourself wanting to do right now i have my hands in lots of different baskets with memberships and they're all coming to an end here soon because of the end of the year or like i started my equinox membership around this time last year so i'm trying to decide because it's like at least your first year you have to do a full year i don't know if like after the year you can like freeze it at any time i don't really know but i'm trying to decide like is equinox really worth it for me am i going i love the classes but i don't know if i'm going enough that i want to keep up with it I have a New York Pilates membership for the year, like unlimited. Maybe is it more financially responsible of me to just book like classes or get class packs instead of like the annual thing for next year. And then I also think I have like five soul cycle classes a month that I purchase and I love spin as we all know and I it was a big part of my life at one point but I'm kind of like, Brooke is so nice and she'll text me like, hey, I'm going to this class. Like she's really motivating in that way. Like, do you want to come? And I found myself not wanting to go unless it's like literally a Drake theme or like a Taylor Swift theme. Like, and I think that's great, but I'm thinking I need to kind of cut back on that and then, you know, go to a fun soul cycle class here and there when I'm in the mood, but it doesn't have to be something that's in my everyday routine. And I don't want to put pressure on myself. I'm like, oh, I haven't gone to soul this week. Like I need to be doing more cardio. Like if that just doesn't make me happy, and that's not gonna get me to work out, like why am I even putting energy towards it? But also I want to push myself in ways, but I think there's other ways to push yourself. So on that note, as I've talked about in my last few videos, I've been loving walks. So I think I'm gonna lean into walking a ton, especially because it's not super cold out in New York City yet, so I can walk like tomorrow morning. My friend texted and she was like, do you wanna go for a morning coffee walk? That's been my new favorite thing, like waking up my washer. That's been my new favorite thing in the morning, waking up, making a cup of coffee to go or like grabbing one outside and going for a walk, like an hour long walk. I obviously have the privilege in my schedule to do so, but I mean, I've been still waking up at like 7.30. My friend that I'm going to walk with tomorrow, she fully works a normal nine to five job. So um, like I, I do know it's like you're able to do it at times. And tomorrow so happens to be also the day that I work out with my trainer. I do strength training once a week with Jane and I'm like gonna go for the walk in the morning and then I'm gonna work out with her. So that's a double day. And for me, a walk truly is a workout. So that's exciting, but that's not normally the case. But it's just like whenever I want, like, oh, I would love to, cause then it's like gossip sesh too. I get to chat with my friends, get our coffee, we go for a long walk, and then you just feel so rejuvenated for the rest of the day. It's so funny in college, I was such an evening. Ugh. My washer will tell you when it's done. Hold on. Um. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, oh, it's so funny because in college, I was such an evening workout gal. Like I, the thought of working out in the morning was terrible and now I'm completely the opposite. I think also because my day hasn't happened yet. So I'm not stressed really about anything. If anything, I wake up a little anxious and going for a walk kind of helps me to prepare for the rest of the day. And also I find like now I have my makeup done. I don't want to work out. I don't want to have to take off my makeup and go work out again. Depends on your schedule, whatever works best. And sometimes I do want like an evening workout sesh or an evening walk. But I found that if I start my day in that way, then I have such a, uh, a way more productive day the rest of the day. And I'm also not pushing it off because it already happened. And then also overall, I just want to be eating more whole foods, eating less processed foods, easier said than done, especially because I have a lot of traveling coming up. Like even when I'm on the plane and they offer you snacks and I'm like, well, I have nothing else here. I'm hungry, you know. Usually those are like more processed foods. Um, maybe if I can start packing myself snacks for the airport, but I don't know if I'm there yet, but just trying to focus on that as much as I can. Um, a good balance between cardio and weight slash Pilates. And when I say cardio, I mean like, you know, 12 through 30 on the treadmill or like a really long fast walk, stuff like that. Mixed with, I've been liking like bar classes, Pilates, weight training, just stuff like that. This is so, this might be niche for me, but I eat so fast, like I don't know, I, I've just always been like, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry and I just eat, 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 and my friends always comment, like I never drink water while I eat, like if I make dinner at home, I don't like get myself a glass of water, which is so strange, like I had Ryan over for dinner last night and he like got himself a glass of water, I'm like I don't even think to like drink while I eat because I'm just like hungry, and then I get full super fast and then I feel disgusting, but then I'm still hungry in like an hour because I just ate so fast, I don't even know how to explain it, so... <laughs> I wanna start drinking more water between bites because I think that'll just help satiate me more in general. That was inspired by, I saw an article, I think it was on The Every Girl. I love following their Instagram. It was about the French lifestyle and how they just take their time to eat. Like, 
Obviously, you don't always have time to sit for an hour and eat and have your food all spread out and enjoy life. C'est la vie. Like, no. When you can, to really savor the food, savor every moment. I'm so like, I don't know if anyone else feels this way. I'll like grab my food and then I quickly try to find a YouTube video or something to watch while I eat it, but I'm so hungry, I eat so fast and then I have somewhere to go. Like, make it a whole moment when you can. I'm just, I'm trying to do that for myself. This is so random and maybe niche. Um, supportive sneakers. I've recently had knee issues in the last year on my left knee. And it's because of my arches. So I got a pair of Brooks sneakers and I got um, custom foot orthotics, like with inserts. Um, and they're amazing. They're starting to get really disgusting though, even though I wash them. So I'm like, okay, I need to go get more shoes like that. Just because then I only have those Brooks and they don't like look cute with every outfit. And I know this is more surface level. I said there'd be some surface level stuff, but maybe I buy one more pair of supportive sneakers, like some all white ones or something that I'd wear with more like cuter outfits per se that I could put my foot inserts into. Because my foot inserts don't fit in every shoe. It's weird. Um, because they're like really thick and they like really, I don't know. So I need to like bring my foot inserts with me to like fleet feet or one of those places and get fitted for like another supportive shoe. Um, Cause that, that just goes into your overall health one day. Like I don't wanna have knee problems one day. Taking the stairs when you can and ignoring the, I wrote ignore the people mover thing at airports, more activity in general. I hate st stairs. Like honestly, I don't like stairs. I'm always opting for the elevator or the escalator and I'm still going to sometimes, but if I have the energy and I'm wearing the right shoes, let's just take the stairs. Let's just do that a little added cardio. I feel winded after usually, but like, it's just sometimes it's those little lifestyle changes I feel like that can really help and that's what I'm hearing from people. So that's what I'm gonna do. Lastly is having a workout buddy. Um, so for example, like Brooke has been really great and will text me, hey, I'm going to SoulCycle if you wanna come. Um, or like I'm going for a walk tomorrow with some of my friends and that's been really nice. Or sometimes they'll go to Equinox and text like, who wants to go to Equinox tomorrow morning workout? It's really nice, um, especially when you have other people that are going to that workout class or go or want to do some sort of workout with you because you can't, you can cancel still, but you feel more bad, you feel worse. Like there's this class I go to at Equinox a lot with some of my other friends that belong to the gym and if you don't show up, it's like, oh, they know I didn't go. You know, like I let them down. Like not that they really care, but I feel like I let them down so it holds me accountable and I never regret going. That's the thing, like you have to remember you never regret going. So yeah, having a workout buddy to kind of keep you in check. Okay, next up we're getting into beauty. Some of this is so materialistic, not even materialistic, but more so superficial, a little materialistic. But we're gonna, this is how I'm trying to blow up, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. All right, the B word, Botox. I don't know if it's living in New York, like everyone here has Botox, and that's not why I feel like I need to. Um, but I always was scared of Botox. I never really understood it. Um, like my mom's never gotten Botox, so I also think it's like how you grew up. Like if you watched your mom or your aunt or someone in your life get Botox, you're like, oh, okay. But it was always so scary and daunting to me. I think I would like to do a little Botox, which is scary. I don't like needles. I don't like medical anything. But I think I would just like how my makeup looks. I think I'd like how my face looks better if I just get a little forehead Botox. And then I'm also kind of looking into some sort of jaw Botox. I just want to feel more snatched here. I want to glow up, so that's part of it. And I've heard of masseter jaw Botox, but I don't, I don't have TMJ. So I don't know if it's really only beneficial if you have TMJ. You guys definitely let me know down below or like what Botox I should be getting. I haven't even gone to anyone yet, so I'm sure I would go when we do it you know, consultation, they'd say, okay, you wanna do this, this, this is what it will look like. I don't wanna do a ton of all, all at once, I really don't. I know for sure I wanna do forehead, I think that's kinda like the baseline. And then just something here, I just don't know what that is. I don't wanna get filler, but something to snatch would be nice. I wanna get a buckle massage. As you guys know, I love face gym and just getting um, lymphatic drainage massages in general where they, you know, really snatch out your face. They're draining your lymph nodes and it feels amazing. You look really good after. However, the new thing I'm hearing about are buckle massages. So right here is your buckle fat. It's spelled B-U-C-C-A-L. And I've heard of, I have some friends here in the city that have gotten buckle massages where if you look at it on TikTok, you might be a little scared. They literally like, go in your mouth and they're like, it's basically lymphatic drainage, but it's even more like they're going to town, like with gloves on, they're in your mouth, like doing stuff. I don't know how comfortable it is, but I really want to do it because my friend said she literally, like her face just looked different after in the best way. I don't know how often you have to keep up with it. I imagine it's a little expensive. 
So it's not sustainable all the time, but I think before like an event or right before the holidays or for our gals, one of our gals in the go live shows, I want to get a buckle massage and just see how it feels and how my face looks. Cause I've just been really insecure about my face recently. <laughs> hair, also something I've not been loving. I like my hair color. My length now, it's like, okay, are we cutting it or are we growing it? Because it's just at this awkward length and I'm just trying to lean into it. I'm trying not to get hair extensions because I've had hair extensions in the past and they look so good. Honestly, when I look, photos, look at photos of myself when I had the sew-in hair extensions, they looked amazing. But they're a lot of work and I just don't know if that's my journey. I love being able to do slick backs and when you have hair extensions, like the ones that you like sleep in and stuff, they just, you can't slick as well, and I really like a slick. So, we're gonna focus on hair growth in general. I mean, you guys know I went darker in hopes of like making my hair healthier. I'd love to, I wanna, my goal now is to grow it long. I've heard really good things about rosemary oil, so um, comment down below if you guys have done that and if you've seen like a change. I have the Divi hair oil and also the Way hair oil, like the scalp serum. So I've been using the Divi one a lot recently, and I think that has rosemary in it. But let me know what you guys think about just like doing regular rose, regular rosemary oil versus you know more of a scalp serum from a brand. What we're liking, how consistent I need to be. I mean, I've looked it up as well. It seems like you know right like right the day before your shower day. You know, like you do it and then you do like a slick back and you just keep it in your hair. But yeah, and I also feel like I need to start taking Nutrafol or something. Like I just want to focus on some hair health. Chemical peel. I don't know if you guys can tell. I mean, you might not be able to tell right now, but you've probably noticed in my other videos. I don't actually I mean, I have like one active pimple right now, but I just have so much scarring on my cheeks and I notice it in like sunlight or in certain flash photos because you can just see like they're flat, but they're just like I have dark spots, I have scarring from when I was, it's actually weird because it was from when I was on Accutane actually, because when I was on Accutane in high school, I mean it worked, like my acne is gone but it brought everything to the surface and so much of it scarred. I don't know if my skin's just more prone to scarring or what, but I was talking to Peyton Sarton when she was on our podcast and she said that getting a chemical peel really helped. It like gives you a new layer of skin. However, you have to be prepared because I'm pretty sure you get one and then your skin is like a snake and like peels off for a week or something. Um, so you have to be kind of prepared to like look a little strange. Maybe you wouldn't have like a big event or something. So. I feel like January is a good time for that. So yeah, I guess that'll be more of a later glow up situation, but I will be getting a chemical peel. Comment down below if you guys have had experiences with that. Keeping up with a self tan spray tan routine. This is for me, but I noticed like I have um, a spray tan right now and I just feel like a million bucks. I feel way better, I feel way cuter. I feel like my clothes look better. I just feel more toned, tan, fit and ready as Katy Perry says. So I don't get spray tans every single week. Um, right now I've been getting them a lot because I've had like specific events and I need them to look like really good. But self tan, like I love tan locks till the day I die. The mousse or like the express one or just putting the face drops on my face. Someone is vibing on the street right now. But just a little reminder that sometimes when you feel tan, you just feel more confident. I just feel better in my outfits. I, I literally feel more confident. I like how I look in photos better. And sometimes I feel weirdly guilty about that. And then I'm like, why? Why do I feel guilty? Like I can just self tan. It's annoying because then if you're in your health fitness grind and you're also in your self tan grind, those don't really go well together because the sweat and the spray tan. But I'm just realizing that's a part of life and People do it, so. Dermaplaning, I just bought more of the little like face razors off of Amazon, they're called Tinkle. And I also have the Skinny Confidential one, I used that one today actually, but I have a lot of peach fuzz. And I find that my makeup applies better when I've like dermaplaned my skin. I When I get my lashes lifted and tinted, uh, she dermaplanes my skin, but the hair honestly grows back pretty fast. It do mine doesn't grow back dark by the way, like it grows back in just like a clear peach fuzz way again. So I just, want to be more consistent with that as well. I'm finding that if I stick to lip liner, it really makes me feel more confident. I don't, I like the idea of lip filler, but I've just heard it's so painful and I just can't handle pain like that very well. So my fake way to do it is like lightly overlining my lips and adding a little lip gloss or even a little lip balm. And I find I just like how my makeup looks better as a whole. It's an art for sure and I'm still learning. And it's also annoying because I feel like half the time I don't even, like I'll bring my lip liner with me to dinner 
and then I like go out after and I just don't reapply my lip liner. So I wanna be more cognizant of like when I'm out like reapplying my lip product and romanticizing it in the bathroom and adding the lip liner back after I've eaten a full meal because you just look so good and you feel so much more confident. Okay, and the last category for our glow up is lifestyle. I wrote, find people who inspire you to keep you going. I'm actually thinking of making a physical mood board because I have so many mood boards on Pinterest. I have saved things on Instagram. I've saved things on TikTok. Like, I have stuff everywhere and I forget where to look almost. However, I do love Pinterest. So I'm kind of thinking about making a physical mood board, like basically making a collage on, I don't want to cut out of magazines because I want to put specific people, specific quotes, specific things on there that I want to embody my everyday life and then print it, like go to FedEx, do it up, print like a glossy one. I'm not gonna frame it probably and like, but just make it, do it up so that it'll probably be a private thing. I probably won't have it for show because it's kind of like personal, but I want to like have that. So every morning when I wake up, I can go look at it. Like maybe I'll put it in my bathroom or something. That can actually work. When I'm brushing my teeth, I can just kind of look at it again and be like, okay, remember what the plan is, what the goal is. As you guys know, I took a break from drinking after my birthday party for like a month, like so half of September, half of October. I felt amazing. My anxiety was down. I was more inspired to work out on the weekends. Like that was nice because I wasn't hung over. I didn't have anxiety. However, this past weekend was Halloween weekend and I drank and I had so much fun and I have no regrets. So the point here is in reminding myself to only drink when you want. Do not drink to make other people happy. I have been around drink pushers and I just, I don't like them. I don't like when people are so upset that I'm not drinking that I feel bad so that I have a drink. And it's just not worth it for me. So, and we talked about this on our podcast with I've Had It, cause I was asking them cause both of those ladies are sober and we were like, what advice do you guys have for people in their 20s, 30s that are in social events and like how to, cause I don't want to make a big deal out of it. Cause if you come in and you're like, well guys, I'm not drinking, but you guys go ahead. It definitely makes it more of a bigger deal. But I'm learning and what the Jen and Pumps told us was like if you're at the table and you're all ordering and you're like, I just really don't want to drink. If they're like, okay, I'll have a vodka soda, I'll have a margarita, whatever. When it comes to you, just be like, oh, I don't really know what I want yet. Like come back to me. And the waiter will probably not come back to you. And if they do, just to be like, eh, I actually changed my mind. Like it just makes it less of a big deal and not this whole conversation piece. Not that you should feel guilty about not drinking, but it will just make it easier for you if you make it less of a big deal or like, you know, get a vodka or get a fuck, get like a club soda with a lime. And like, as the night goes on, people get drunker and they really just don't know what you're holding. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm trying to do more of and just feeling confident in your decision. I mean, I went to the Georgia bar this past weekend to watch the game and I just fully kept getting waters cause I needed to hydrate. Cause I was going out that night. I just didn't want, I just don't like to drink in the day all the time. And I still had a blast. Kind of on that note, surround yourself with supporting and uplifting people. As I'm getting older, I'm 25 now, um, there's just gonna be people that, there were people in my life that I felt like I had to stay close with because of whatever reason, because we've known each other forever, or we have mutual friends, whatever it may be. But like, if they don't serve me, and they, if I feel like shit when I'm around them, or I don't feel inspired or motivated, like, why are they in my life? And like, I'm still gonna be nice and a normal human, but maybe like, only making plans with people, only making a true effort with people that I feel good around, I feel inspired, like, the girls I'm going on a walk with tomorrow, they just make me feel so inspired. They make me feel so good about life that, you know, I want to be around them. Also, I wrote saying no and being okay slash firm with your decision. Cause sometimes plans come maybe in a group chat and it's like, oh, who wants to all do this? And I am free, but I want to like stay home and do like a cleaning session or maybe I'm free and I just want to have a solo day or maybe I'm free and there's just other people like that I want to make plans with. You don't always have to be available. And I'm learning that, cause I'm realizing that when I try to make plans with people, I can tell like maybe they're just wanting to be alone that day. And I used to take it personally and now I'm realizing, oh, it's not like that at all. So just saying no and then being okay with it. Not being like going to their Instagram story and being like, oh, FOMO, like wish I was there. Oh my gosh, I should have come. You're gonna, like if you say no, you gotta be firm in that. Cause it's also just, I don't know, it makes you more confident too. This is something I'm gonna do in the next few weeks, cleaning out my products, like my makeup drawer, my shower. I actually recently cleaned out my shower, so I won't do that. But cleaning out like my bathroom caddy is just so full of stuff right now. My makeup drawers are just so crazy. Like I wanna clean those out, like look at what products have expired. I'm learning that products expire. I mean, I always knew, but I didn't really know that well. 
and now I'm realizing, okay, I need to go look at my makeup, stuff like that, because then you're only, you only have the products in front of me, in front of you that you're using every day. It's more motivating to like, you know, do your hair, like use your heat protectant and stuff. If you're not looking at a ton of products, you just have like your heat protectant, your leave-in conditioner, your hairspray, your dry shampoo, like just make it, make it simple and clean for you so you're following your routines. And lastly, I wrote fake confidence till you make it. Sometimes like if I'm going to a social setting and I'm just not feeling it, like my social battery is not charged. I notice I walk in and then I just have a slump. I just, no one wants to talk to me. I'm not fun. I don't feel good. I'm, I'm overthinking every interaction I'm having. Whereas you could be like, okay, we're going to this event, shoulders back and down, posture is good. We're walking into the event. Sometimes I learned this tip and I cannot remember who told me. Well, I know Kelly told me, but I think she got the tip from someone else. Walk into a room, stand there for a second, look left and right, and then proceed. Like kind of scan the room to be like, okay, where do I want to go? Instead of like walking in and like freaking out, walk in, be confident. Everyone will notice you and you'll just feel better. And that's part of the glow up too. I think you glow from within when you're just so happy with yourself and you're so confident and you're not worried about like your outfit. Like that goes with like wearing clothes that you feel good in. I've really learned what clothes I like for my body tape, my body type, stuff like that. Woo! So that's the glow up. There was a lot there, um, but that, that that's like the personal list I made for myself and then I decided to make a video about it. So that was raw, real, right there for you. If you have any tips on any of the things I talked about, definitely let me know down below when we get a fun discussion down there and hopefully some of you guys join me. Maybe we could like name this glow up. I don't know, I just wanna glow up. I wanna feel like fire come like spring, early summer. So that's the goal. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.